So if you want to add a fan to a room that isn't wired for a fan, what do you, how do you, let me show you. Welcome to Kyler's studio. So I already had a dumb fan in my room with a smart switch for the lights on the wall, but I wanted to be able to control my fan with a separate switch and potentially make it smart in the future. Well, I pulled apart my outlet, after turning off the circuit breaker, of course, to discover that I only had two wires and a ground running up to the fan and the ceiling. Well, come to find out that my switch was only wired with 14-2 wire, and you need 14-3 wire if you want to control your fan separate from your light. So this Romex wire, the 14 means the gauge, how thick the wire is. You can see the 12-2 wire here, that's usually for 20 amp circuits. Most fans I think are 15 amp, so a 14-3 Romex wire is what you're going to need if you want to rewire the fan. You see, in order to control the lights and the fan separately, you need three separate wires. One for the fan, one for the light, and one to complete the circuit. Now, if for some reason you have yellow wire running up to your fan, you probably have a 20 amp circuit breaker and you can get the 12 three wire. But this heavier gauge is usually reserved for the kitchen or the garage where you're doing heavier things. So more likely than not, you have a 15 amp circuit. So the 14 three wire should work perfect. You can find it at Home Depot in the electric section. And now it's time to run the wire. Since every situation is different, I'll go fast. In my situation, I'm on the top level, so instead of replacing the wire that's in there, I can merely cap it off. And because this box has enough room for two wires, I just ran an extra wire. So I ended up feeding it through the ceiling and catching it in the attic. Now my attic was filled with this snow insulation, so all I had to do was dig out where I thought it went down the wall and feed it down the wall. Now I was lucky that there was no fire block in there to block me. I could merely go straight down into the wall and fish it through to my outlet. All you really have to do for this wire is make sure that it's tacked down to the wood. Just use the previous method that they use to install it, which is usually these wide thick staples that you just hammer into the wood. So after you feed the wire down through the wall, you want to feed it into the wall box and then tack it to the wood and then install or reinstall your wall box. If you want more details of how to expand a single switch to a dual gang switch, check out my other video. Okay, now to the wiring. Let's start with the ceiling box. There may be a screw to a pinch bracket to make sure your Romex is secured. Now, if you don't pull the old wire out, it's important to use a single nut to cap the individual wires. Now, just for good measure, I used the copper ground wire and connected it to the wall box of the old wire and the new wire. Probably not required, I just don't want a free-floating wire in the wall not grounded to anything. So now when you mount your mounting plate for your fan, make sure the ground goes to both your ceiling box and your other ground wires. Remember, your green wire, or the bare copper wire, is your ground wire. Every mounting bracket is different, so just make sure all the green and copper are connected to all the metal pieces of the unit. The fan mounting unit should screw directly into the ceiling mounting box. So now that it's grounded, you should have three wires coming out of the ceiling. So this fan particularly has these two notches in the mounting bracket to where I can hang it up while I do the wiring. So now that it's hanging securely, I can connect the wiring. First, I want to connect the ground, the green to the green to the copper. Now besides the ground, you should have three other wires coming out of your fan unit. It should be a black wire, a white wire, and a unique wire. This unique wire might be blue, in this case it's black and white striped. Now the second easiest besides the ground is the white. The white you just connect to the white. This is your neutral wire. I like to think of this as a circuit completion wire. It's the return of the power. It's not like a directional flow thing, it's just a way to think about it. Now you have two wires left, the black and the unique. Well, it's commonly accepted that the black goes with the black. This is your fan wire. Just remember which connects to which so you can differentiate in your wall box. Now in the Romex coming out of the ceiling, the red wire is more of a unique wire. So. You'll use the red wire to connect to your fan's unique wire. The unique wire might be blue or some other color, but that you can connect to the red. That goes to your light. Now just make sure no bare wire is poking out of any of those nuts and shove them all up in there. You may want to wait to close up your fan just to make sure you got the wiring right. And of course you'll want to test it with the light and not the fan. You don't want the fan spinning when it's not mounted. And now to the wall box. Now this is the scenario where the power coming from the circuit breaker comes to my wall switch first. And I'm going to wire two separate switches in here, one for the light control, the other for the fan control. So first I'm gonna start with the ground. All the ground wires go together. 
The old school way of doing this is using these ground nuts. They're green nuts that have a hole on the end and you slide them up to connect all the grounds and then the remaining tail outside of the ground connects to each of the switches. Alternatively, you can use what's called a pigtail, just an extra wire coming out of the wire nut to connect to the other grounds or other wires. And or you can use those in conjunction with the Sure Connect, also called Wago nuts. Now, since the line of power coming from my circuit breaker is coming to my box, I need to connect all these black hot wires to each individual switch so that each circuit has power connected to it. These smart switches come with a pigtail often already attached. So then each black pigtail coming off the switch needs to connect to the power that goes to the circuit breaker. Oftentimes these wires that come from the circuit breaker will also daisy into another. So you may have multiple black wires connecting in the box. So if you think about it, the power comes from the circuit breaker into the box and connects to another power that goes to another box. Well, within this first box that we're wiring here, each of the switches needs power. So the black lines here are going to a switch. That switch runs up to the fan or up to the light and then comes back through the common wire, which then completes the circuit. Hence the black kind of going out and the white kind of coming back. So instead of having too many wires coming from the circuit breaker, I'm using this pigtail that already existed to connect to my fan switch. So I have the light switch pigtail coming off this main bunch of wires, and then my fan switch pigtail, I will use a nut to connect to the fan switch. It's often helpful to use pliers to twist all the 14 gauge wire together, and then you can twist the small pigtail that goes to the switch in with the nut. Now keep in mind, if you're using these old school nuts, some are made for more wires than others. Check the packaging to make sure you have the big enough nut for the wiring bunch. Now I'm taking my 14 gauge wire pigtail from this black power line into my fan switch so that each of them have power. I just need a small nut because those are two little wires. So now, just to review, from the circuit breaker, I have these black lines coming in. I pigtailed one to the first switch. I pigtailed the other to the other switch. Now, there should be these white wires coming off of your switches. These white wires, or your common wires, will connect to the other common wires already in the box. Now, the white wire that is running up to your fan will also connect in this white wire bunch, or common wire. That's your circuit completion wire. So you should have two more wires that run up to your fan, a black wire and the unique wire. In this case, it's my red wire. This is the same wire that you wired up in your fan. I like to think of this as sort of the control wire. This is what controls each of the units, even though it's just power transfer and completing circuits. So as you recall, the red wire we connected up to the unique wire in the fan. This controls our light. So the black wire coming off of our light switch will connect with the unique wire. So this light switch will complete the circuit for our light and our light only. Now the other wire, the black wire running up to our fan, is of course our fan control. So I will connect the yellow wire or the remaining wire from the fan switch to this black wire that runs up to complete the circuit for the fan and the fan only. Hopefully that was slow enough and clear enough that you can understand which wire connects to what. Don't ask me why they decided to make fan control switches yellow and ceiling fan switches up in the ceiling blue or black and white. I guess that's just the American way. Okay, it's now time to review. If you've made it this far, maybe the textual and the pointing will help you with some clarification. So we have power coming from the circuit breaker into my light switch box. The white neutral wire coming from the circuit breaker connects to all my other neutral wires. And the bare copper wire connects to all my other green or bare copper ground wires. I also have another 14-2 wire set connecting to another switch box in the house. These wires are connected to the same, black to black, white to white, and green to ground. So for my light switch, the light switch gets power from the black wire running from the circuit breaker. When the switch is powered on, it sends the power up the black wire, connects to the red wire, which runs up to the ceiling box. That red wire connects to the special colored wire that runs to the ceiling fan light. 
out of the light, the neutral wire comes back down to the switch box connecting to all the other neutral wires back to the circuit breaker, thus completing the circuit. For the fan switch, it gets power from the circuit breaker. When the switch is turned on, it sends power through the yellow wire into the black wire to control only the fan. Then the white neutral wire comes back from your fan back into the switch box and back to the circuit breaker panel to complete the circuit. In case you have a different wiring situation, just search for how to wire a ceiling fan. Home Depot has a good website about the basics, or there are lots of good images in case you have power coming directly to the ceiling box, or if you're trying to do a three-way fan or light switch. Once you figure out which wires are running to where and what colors, then it shouldn't be too hard to figure out how to get it wired. Then it's just a matter of closing up your fan, screwing your switches into the box, and putting the cover plate on. Hopefully you found that video helpful. If you want to see more details about how to expand from one switch to two switch, check out my other videos and be sure to subscribe.